Good uh, afternoon, uh, Pascal. Uh, okay, our team and Chimichu. my myself uh, are very happy to meet you, uh, Pascal, uh, as uh, ecologist. Uh, uh, and then uh, you have uh, worked on uh, Termite Mound in Cambodia for many months and many years in Cambodia. So we are very glad to meet you here in Siem Reap again. Yeah. Okay, okay. thank okay. you. And my first question is a very simple question. Why you have been interested in uh, Termite Mound research in Cambodia? Mm -hmm. So I've worked in, uh, in Southeast Asia for a long time, in Asia, in fact, because I've worked also in India. And in Cambodia, it's very, very surprising because you have very huge activity of termites. So usually in tropical environments, you have a huge activity in soil. You have a huge activity of earthworms and mostly it's earthworms and many other animals. But termites a little bit, but not so, so much. But here, because of the specific uh, weather and maybe uh, climate you have during the dry and rainy season, you have a huge activity of uh, termites. And they bring a lot of soil on the surface, built what we call termite mounds, that have very, very specific properties. And uh, when you see the landscapes, the paddy fields here, it's very surprising, but it's, very, uh, it's a striking feature of the landscapes. So that's part of the answer. I'm here because of this huge activity that you have in the landscapes. So why are you interested in, uh, for example, in a termite mound, for example, in termite? Yeah. Yeah, what, what for? What the interest of a termite in, I mean, in soils? Uh, in, uh, yeah, yeah there, there are in fact many reasons. The first is because I'm a soil ecologist, so I'm working on the properties of soil, so the impact of biodiversity, so termites on soil. And if you compare the soil from the termite mounds to the surrounding soil, the soil a little bit further uh, in the paddy field, for example, or elsewhere, you will see that the soil properties are very, very different. They are usually enriched, they have more uh, clay content, so the properties are very different. And then this explains why uh, traditional practice uh, is based on uh, Khmer, but not only in, uh, in Cambodia, in fact, also in uh, Northeast. In, in, in Asian in, in Northeast Thailand, where ah. the climate is a bit similar. In part of the Laos, where the climate is also and the soil properties are also very similar. And in that case, you find the same structure and the same activity of termites. And the farmers, traditionally, they use that soil from the termite mound because they know that the soil is, has better properties. It's, and they use it to improve the fertility of their land. That's something that traditional. But things are changing and they are less and less used because the farmers, they are more and more using uh, mechanization. I mean, uh, Cambodian farmers less uh, use uh, uh, termite mound or maybe they are less and less uh, termite mound in Cambodia, for example. Probably both and both are linked. Probably that uh, it probably also depends on the situation. Here, you have a much more, uh, more termite mounds in the paddy field than, uh, for example, in Shrebak, in uh, Kampung Chanang, where I'm working. And if you go to Kampot, you'll find a lot also. Uh, but if, so it depends on the situation. If you go to Batambang, you won't see any. So it depends on the localization. It depends on maybe the history, if the farmers have decided to, to get more space for growing vegetables or rice then they get rid of the mounds and they use the land for growing uh, plants. But uh, according to your observation, so yeah. uh, which uh, province, uh, I mean, which uh, Cambodian province uh, uh, that have a lot of uh, termite mound, for example, you mentioned already just now, maybe in Kampung Chinang or maybe in Kampot, uh, besides uh, these uh, two provinces? So uh, according to my observation, but this has to be confirmed, but I'm here also for this reason, here in Siem Reap, it's because we came here uh, some months ago and we saw a lot of termite constructions. And also in Kulen, in Mont Kulen, uh, it's supposed to be a, a place where farmers are still having this uh, traditional practice. They, they are still using in a sustainable way the termite amounts for improving their land. So I'm here for this in a way to compare also the situation and to see why uh, some farmers prefer to keep these hotspots of uh, fertility 
but mm -hmm. it's not only fertility, it's also biodiversity, because you find a lot of plants that have disappeared elsewhere, mm -hmm. uh, many animals also, or, and plants that are used, uh, consumed, or used as medicinal plants. So these termites, so in, to answer to your first question, in yeah. fact, these termites, they are very interesting because of the impact they have on soil, but not only for that, because they uh, provide many services, what we call ecosystem services, to the population. So they have access to the medicinal plants, some plants to eat, some animals that can consume, and, and of course the soil and, uh, that is good for improving the fertility of their land. But it's so shade, it's many other uh, services. So according to your observation, I, uh, allow me to ask you again, there are a lot of uh, termite mounds in Cambodia, yes. or maybe there are not many? No, 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 there, there are still a lot. Uh, much more than, for example, in uh, Northeast Thailand, where I work also. But in Northeast Thailand, probably that in the past they had a situation similar mm. to the one we, we have today in, in Cambodia. But because of uh, maybe the access to, um, to the market, mm. to uh, maybe their access to the chemicals, and then they have developed another kind of uh, development. And, and, uh, and then there are the services provided by nature, yeah. what we call the, uh, uh, how to say, the nature-based solutions. These uh, nature-based solutions, in fact, were useless uh, in, uh, in, Cambodia, in uh, Thailand. And then they get rid, they destroy all these mounds. But the problem we, we have is that maybe we don't know exactly the time needed for uh, these termites to build again that mounds oh. with a specific vegetation and so on and if we compare the situation to with the one we observe in uh, in america or in africa we need centuries to several thousand of oh, years to, 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 to build, build to, to build, build the mound so if it's destroyed it's probably oh. destroyed for forever so that's why we are here also to understand with the farmers their use, what they do, what they think, their perception, and also to measure, to measure with uh, specific some uh, analysis on the soil properties and so on, to measure this impact before it's too late and before uh, <laughs> it's uh, like So a uh, Cambodian farmers still use a lot of uh, termite mound to improve uh, land quality, soil quality in Cambodia, or maybe they don't know well and maybe they destroy all termite mound and uh, they replace uh, by using, for example, a chemical fertilizer. It, I think it's a, it's a site-specific answer and probably that the, the situation we have here in Siem Reap is very different than the, we ha the one we have in Kapong Chanang. But what I can tell you is that we organized a workshop with the farmers in May, in, uh, and with, uh, in May, so several weeks ago. And in Kampung Chanang? In Kampung Chanang. Yes. And the farmers were very interested, very eager to communicate their skill, to explain their feeling, their perception, not only about the fertility management, but also the fact that they have access to many plants that are consumed, or maybe uh, other aspects, so for example, the shade, because it, when it's w during the dry season, when the sun is very strong, uh, it's too hot, the only place where you find shade in the paddy field, in the country's side, or in, in, a, in a paddy field, it's only the termite construction, in termite mounds, because they are covered by trees. Mm -hmm. So for all of these reasons, there is an interest, and the farmers, they are very interested. So they know a lot, but unfortunately, even if they know, the beneficial uh, impact that termites can have on soil properties, even with this knowledge, they have to face another reality, which is not us as a scientist. The fact is that they need labors. They are today more dependent from chemicals. Mm -hmm. So the situation has changed. And even if they understand, they know the, the positive impact of these structures, their reality is often um, telling them to, uh, that it's better to destroy the mouth. Uh, sorry to, to clarify with you, maybe I do not understand well. For example, a Cambodian farmer or maybe farmer, they destroy, I mean, they destroy a uh, termite mound and then they use, uh, I mean, the dirt mound uh, to improve uh, uh, soil quality for their farming or they, they need to keep uh, my mound to, uh, I mean, uh, to, to improve uh, the soil quality. Sorry to cla clarify. Yeah, sure. The traditional approach is to not destroy totally the mound. It's to cut, like to, to carve. Oh. So you have a big amount of soil and yeah. the farmers, they, 
they, they cut uh, part of it okay. because the mound is growing no, slowly, of course, it's a slow process, but the mound is growing and then they destroy it. They cut the mound and they use part of the past of it, but without killing the colonies, without killing the termites. Oh. And they use the soil and they do that maybe every two, three years. So oh. it's a sustainable. Traditionally, it was something like sustainable. Because they they but use if uh, they cut just a little bit, uh, I yeah. mean uh, some uh, some part of the termite mount just a little bit. Uh, so how can you improve? Uh, I mean the rye field soil quality, for example, just a little bit. Yes, because the, the soils here are uh, most of the time they are very very sandy, so they are very poor properties in terms of water retention, for example, or in terms of chemical fertility. So that's why farmers apply a lot of chemicals, because they need to improve the, the, the amount of potassium, of uh, phosphate, and uh, nitrogen, all these elements that are crucial and very important for rice. Because of this low soil fertility, if you improve, if you apply a soil with a, which is, even if it's a low amount of soil, if you apply a soil with, uh, which has uh, better properties, let's say better properties, then, and, and it's not like the nutrients, the chemical nutrients, if it's raining, they will wash away. They, will, they won't be uh, retained in soil. They, you won't keep them in the soil. While if it's soil, mm -hmm. the decomposition, the, the availability of the nutrients will be slower and it will be more sustainable. So uh, you don't need to apply every year and a lot. You improve by adding uh, just a little amount, you improve for the long time. That doesn't mean that you become independent from the chemicals, but you become less dependent from them. So you said just now that uh, you discussed with a farmer in Cambodia, maybe Kampung Chnang, uh, recently, a few, a few weeks ago. So they still want to use, uh, I mean, uh, termite mound to improve their land quality, their soil quality? No, in Kampung Chnang, the situation is a bit different. They are facing, uh, the economy is very difficult. And in addition, the, 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 they have no access to manpower. In addition, they, they are in a process of simplification of the system. So they, they prefer uh, to sell sometimes the old amount, so in that case it's oh. totally lost, to, uh, for example, people uh, growing vegetables in other area. So sometimes you have a transfer of soil from one place to another and then the termite mounds, they are destroyed. destroyed. And, the and the farmer, even if they know that it's good, they prefer, they are in, in this dynamics of, uh, in fact, it's, it's a negative dynamics. And they, they lose this natural fertility that is coming from the activity of termites and plants. It's not only termites. Huh? And uh, for something that is not sustainable. And they sell, they get, they earn a bit of uh, money but it's not sustainable because when it's lost, it's lost. And, uh, and it's people who are doing uh, vegetable gardening in other uh, cities or provinces who take the soil and use this soil. Uh, just now you said that, uh, for example, the termit, uh, termite, termite mound uh, can, be, can be used as a traditional medicine. What do you mean that? There are many plants, <laughs> but don't, don't ask me the name. But we, we have in our team uh, someone who are of us, uh, several people interested by this um, diversity of plants that you can find on termite mounds. And in, in the, you know that the, it's not only on termite mounds, but you know that uh, the Khmer cuisine uh, and the Khmer traditional medicines are mostly based on plants. So there is a local, uh, local but also national because you, everything is already recorded. So there is this knowledge, these practices, that uh, rely on the utilization of nature, of what the nature gave you. Uh, so farmers are growing, for example, most of the farmers, maybe in the place we work, it's perhaps 80% of the farmers who have uh, a small garden and they grow their own vegetables. But in addition, they can go, the forest has disappeared. So the only place where you can find other plants, other vegetables, on the, exactly. On, on, on termite the, mound. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So that, uh, that's what we suspect. <laughs> that's our, our hypothesis. So uh, so far, how long have you been doing, for example, your research on termite mound in Cambodia, uh, specifically in Kampung Chnang, for example? So uh, it's approximately two years. I, this is my second year here in, in Cambodia. But I have uh, been very lucky and I supervised a, a, 
a PhD, the PhD of a colleague here in, in Cambodia, her name is Rata Moine, who is uh, currently working with me. She's a scientist from ITC. And she did a, a PhD under my supervision. But again, before that, uh, I work in, uh, in Vietnam, in, in Thailand, Thailand, and in, in India, and situations, even if they are different, are yeah. in a way very similar because the environment and the, the termite bioturbation can be um, in a way comparable. Yeah, but uh, how, how, I mean, uh, uh, how many uh, termite mound uh, that you have been uh, doing your research, uh, for example, in Cambodia so far, uh, within two years? Termite mounds? No, I don't know how many termite mounds we have studied. We have studied a lot of oh. uh, termites. In, in Cambodia? Yes, of course, of course. Because I'm a soil scientist, so we, we go in one place, we collect the soil, we analyze the soil, we compare with another situation. So we did that a lot, uh, of course, with my colleagues from uh, ITC and uh, Royal University of Agronomy as well, and other colleagues from other institutions. So we did this a lot, uh, yes. Within two years, a lot. And, and two years and three years before, it was the PhD of my students. So let's oh. say that's uh, approximately five years that I'm working in Cambodia. So following your work, I mean in Cambodia for many years already, so uh, from day to day, Cambodian farmers still want to use uh, termite, I mean uh, termite mound as, uh, uh, as a natural fertilizer or maybe they still want to use a chemical fertilizer because they, they, they gel a lot of, um, uh, I mean, uh, product. <laughs> The, the situation, I think, uh, is, again, it's different from one side to side, but where we work, the farmers are mostly using uh, chemical fertilizers. We did with our colleagues from AgriSud, uh, they did a, a survey and they analyzed and they uh, arrived to the conclusion that approximately 40% of the budget Mm -hmm. is spent in the, pr in the production for system is for chemical fertilizers, is for purchasing chemical fertilizer. So it's a huge amount of money, in a way energy, spent in these elements. So if we can find a sustain, and it's not sustainable, because you contribute to the pollution of the environment. So if we can find a Another solution, way, yeah, a, a solution. natural based solution, yeah. <laughs> that would be the best. But this cannot be um, found without this communication with the farmer and this sh knowledge that is shared. Uh, because they have a lot of knowledge of the situation and they are the one in contact. N nobody else knows better than them the situation. So we are in contact with them. We started to be in contact with them and then to have this feedback and the next step is, is in fact, to, with uh, the knowledge we we'll gain from your results is to come back to the farmers and to try to find a win-win situation where biodiversity can be restored, preserved, mm -hmm. and the livelihood of the farmers can be improved. So another question, for example, I heard about uh, compost. Uh, uh, compost is uh, something which has been produced by uh, the, uh, in the I mean in a natural way as well. So compost and termite mound. So which one is the best, for example, uh, not talking about the chemical fertilizer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it depends on the situation. If you are working in, uh, for example, uh, vegetable gardening, uh, if you are growing vegetables and you need to have uh, organic matter in your soil, in that case, compost or other kind of organic material. For example, it can be the litter in the forest. It can be many things or it can be the manure. It can be many things. Any input of organic matter will be, in general, beneficial to your soil system. But if you are in a, an environment like paddy field, where the soils are, most part of the time, or at least when it's cultivated, under the water, in that case, I don't know, I don't want to <laughs> warranty that the situation is like that yeah. here, but our work in Vietnam shows that 20 years of uh, incorporation of organic matter didn't improve the carbon content in the soil. So it's not because you apply compost, <laughs> manure, whatever, in the paddy field that you will improve the carbon content in the paddy field. But that doesn't mean that you don't apply other elements that are also very important for plants. Potassium, for example, silicon. There are many elements that are not linked or directly linked to carbon. It's not carbon in soil, but it's important element, nutrients for plants. 
that can be brought by uh, this organic matter. So following your study, following your research here in Cambodia, in Kampong Chenang, or maybe in Siem Reap, so you want to see termite mound keeping alive for many, <laughs> many other years in Cambodia, and uh, we, will, we will be used uh, by Cambodian uh, farmer, if I'm not wrong, maybe your idea. <laughs> I, I've been, uh, maybe uh, I can tell you a bit of, uh, of my uh, experience, but not in Cambodia, in, in India. In India, you have sometimes this, um, um, I'd say, this experience of talking with uh, farmers, people who feel very close, who feel this very close relationship with nature, and who try to uh, to find a way, uh, maybe to share um, elements, space, whatever, to share the things with nature, and it makes very beautiful stories. And for example, agroforestry. It's possible to visit some incredible places in, in, uh, in India where people have developed some system, very complex systems, where each element, you have biodiversity in your system. So of course it's not intensive system, but you have a lot, a lot of different kind of plants, services, you have the water that is purified. This complexity is very, very interesting. And I would like, if I have a dream to do, is perhaps that here, people, uh, but I mean, it's not only in Cambodia, it's everywhere yeah. in the world, that people understand that the nature is complexity and that our systems are not only one, uh, they don't provide only one service. They are multifunctional, Multi. multifunctional. That means that they are useful, important for preserving water, the water quality in your soil, the water quality, the carbon in your soil. They are important for providing uh, the plants you will eat, you will consume when you're sick or to, to, to avoid to be sick, for example. And it's a multi, the systems, they are multifunctional. They have to provide many services. And it's only when we understand or accept that perhaps we have to produce less but better that the system, I hope, will be more sustainable. Maybe the last uh, question with you, uh, Pascal. I have heard you uh, talking about the interest of a termite, termite mound or something like that for the quality of soil, uh, for the nature. But just uh, the last question uh, for you is that um, termite in house, they destroy ah. house. Uh, so <laughs> so yeah. maybe uh, they, are, they are different type or just the last uh, question with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, uh, I fully agree, of course. Uh, so this is the yin and the yang. So <laughs> when something is positive on the other side, you have something negative. So it's the same. So when you are in a natural environment, you have a balance. And these termites that are feeding on the soil, usually it's, um, sorry, not the soil, the plants. When they feed on the plants, it's dead plants. It's plant that is already uh, uh, in a process of decomposition. So they are very useful because they provide, they participate to this dynamics of recycling and they provide the nutrients available to the plants. But this is in a natural system. If you go in a system where there is only one plant, sugarcane, for example, mice. So in that case, if the plant is a bit weak, because you have other predators, because you have a drought sometimes, mismanagement of nutrients or whatever. In that case, the positive and beneficial impacts of anything, here termites, but it can be anything, then it become negative and then they can attack the plants. And it's the same in a, in a city. The termites, they are not uh, <laughs> born to be in a city. They are not, they are like in a zoo, you okay. know. So in that case, it's true that they can have huge impact on the construction mm -hmm. and, and yeah. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your very uh, informative uh, explanation, uh, Pascal. Very interesting for Cambodian audience. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You thank much. you very much. Thank you so much.